I'm the publisher of Chasing Plastic Magazine. It's a magazine on the sport of Ultimate Frisbee. Ultimate Frisbee is similar to a Frisbee football game played with teams on a field roughly the size of a soccer field. And it's a growing sport in Canada and the US, North America, worldwide. How I started was that I was a photojournalist out in the mountains doing snowboarding. And I moved away from that in 1998 and I started playing Ultimate on an almost full-time basis. I had been shooting photos at tournaments and I had been doing a little bit of writing, but there was not really a market for that. So there was enough interest from the players when they saw the photos of themselves and heard the stories of talking of all these tournaments around the country that it seemed as long as you could get some advertisers interested, you could uh, make a publication that people would really appreciate. Chasing Plastic magazine was first launched in July 2001, was the first issue. The magazine has a cover price of $5. It's grown to 4,000 copies per print run and it's going out to uh, 10 different countries worldwide. Every weekend or every second weekend is a road trip and more information for the magazine, more stuff that will give the magazine a more comprehensive look. You do a little sales, you do a lot of networking, you talk to people who are organizing the sport in different cities, different leagues, different teams. Everything in the magazine is about trying to communicate and uh, grow the sport. There's some how-to articles, some training articles, some health, how to recover from injuries, how to fuel your body properly, and some profiles on different players, different interesting characters uh, playing ultimate in different areas. People have signed up for the magazine for a year subscription at a tournament or they can do it online or by phone. It's not a competitive field so much as it's a difficult field to be very successful in. There's a lot of magazines, there's not a lot of uh, money to be made at magazines. You have to find a niche market. So because I figured I had the niche market, I thought I could go ahead and start the business and capture that market. Okay, so here's the Sherpa proof set we ran off. Excellent. Chasing Plastic is operated by myself and I contract out a lot of different jobs to different people whether it's advertising sales, design, photography, writing, uh, it's all pieced together by me. We're going to be running 200 lines for you. Most of the work is done through the internet. Everybody has their own home office, so we collaborate by phone, by email, uh, sending and receiving the data and the uh, images, the files, things that we're going to uh, put together to make an issue. The magazine is printed at the Winnipeg Sun Commercial Print Division, so it's very easy for me to go down and do proofs to look over you know, the files before, after they've come from the computer and been printed out uh, and sign all those things off. It cuts down on the time frame and the cost associated with that. Now, this is the paper that we were talking about. Chasing um, Plastic is establishing itself as a uh, viable alternative for advertisers in Canada and the US. There's a company that's working out of Montreal called Ulti Marketing, which has helped us a lot there in the business of bringing corporations and corporate sponsorship into the sport and they've been the ones who are responsible for getting big companies like Molson into Ultimate. Excellent. So we're off to press. Thank you very much. Perfect. It was tough to get financing because magazines aren't a commonplace business. You approach a bank and say, I'd like to start a magazine. They've probably never had to deal with that sort of application before. So unless you learn how to market that magazine well and you can garner a readership base the magazine's not really worth anything. So the business plan might look good, but it's still just a plan and they, they want something more tangible. But when we went to the Community of Futures, they helped, took a look at it as a special circumstance and talked about it. And I mean, there was a risk to do something like that, but that's sort of their mandate to try and get businesses uh, started in their areas. A lot of the smaller circulation magazines, there's not a large margin in them at all. So as the magazines get bigger they can attract larger advertising dollars and that's when the margins increase and things become uh, more profitable. Last year's gross was uh, $60,000 and it's probably half and half between advertising sales and selling posters and magazines and the photographs and some of the merchandise. We see that figure uh, increasing every year for quite a few years as the business, the sports and even the recognition of ultimate uh, grows. Good afternoon, Jason Plastic.
it's, it seems everything is established now. So now there's more time and energy that can be placed into trying to figure out ways to grow the business and improve the business, whereas for the first year or two it was struggling to make sure you made any sort of deadlines you had. Now it looks like there's time to plan ahead and see the future. I see getting someone into the office on a regular basis to cover some of the things that need to be done. As the sport is growing, as more advertisers are coming involved, there is more work, but there's also more means to have more people involved to make a better product to get it out to more people. The rewards right now are uh, accomplishment, uh, establishing something, like creating something. And every time you get another issue out and it comes back and you like the way it looks, like that's, that's a re good reward where you get an email from someone saying, I just saw your magazine for the first time and it's great. Those are good rewards, any good feedback and uh, just feeling that you've done something uh, well or correctly.